God, well, there are so many words that we can use to describe you. You are great. You are Lord. You are Savior. And I pray that in this moment we take advantage of the breath that you have given us. You have given us a voice and we should use it to pour out all praise and worship in your name. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning again. In case I haven't had the chance to meet you before, my name is Brian Sherman and I am the youth director along with my wife Katrina here at Dripping Springs. And before I jumped into the scripture reading, I actually wanted to share a little bit of first service. At first service, we had a missionary who came in and shared a little bit about what he is doing. His name is Tommy Nauman. He currently lives in Germany with his wife, and they have been out in the mission field since the 70s. They've been doing their work for, for 50 years, and we currently support them financially to help them do what they do. He talked about how most of the people that he reaches were Muslim. He said about 80%. And the amazing thing is he's kind of just there. He has people coming to him wanting to come to Christ and be baptized. And he's just there. He's in the right place at the right time. He's been doing this in Greece and in the Middle East and reaching out to refugees and asylum seekers in those areas. And so I just want y'all to know the amazing work that he's doing and how we have an amazing opportunity as a church to support him, which we're doing. And so I'm, I'm sorry that y'all missed him, but he had to go to San Marcos after this morning to another church there who is also supporting him. They've been in the, been in the States um, for not very long, and I'm pretty sure that he's, they said that they leave next Tuesday to go back to Germany. And so we lifted him up in prayer, and it's an amazing thing that they're doing. And his story reminded me of a little stat, a stat that's kind of mind-blowing. And I'll admit, this is a little bit easier said than done. But it's the world's greatest pyramid scheme, okay? Christianity. And I say that in a good way. I'm serious. But you see, if you were to find three people in your life who do not know Christ, and you discipled them, and made them true disciples. And what I mean by true disciples is that they are disciples, followers of Christ, who then go on to make more disciples. If you, take, if you make three of those disciples, and then they go on and take three each, and then those nine take three each, you do this 21 times, and that's 10 billion people. 21 times over, and you have more than the Earth's population. And now I know that sounds a lot easier said than done, but his story just reminded me of, he has people coming to him, and there are people in our very community who do not know Christ and have a relationship with him. And so it's a challenge for us, church. We don't necessarily have to go, but we need people like Tommy and his wife, but we can also stay right here and reach people and make disciples in our community. And so let's go ahead and jump in. We have been going through the series the image of the invisible God going through the letter to the Colossians from Paul. Today's scripture reading is Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. If you have a Bible, you can open it up or turn it on, or you can join me on the screen. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. 
All right. And so, right off the bat, Paul is starting off this little section with a therefore. And in a recent youth study that we did just this past Wednesday, the speaker talked about, we watched a video, and he talked about how when there is a therefore, you need to know what it is there for. It's a very important key word. When it's there, you should look back and see what Paul is talking about. And so last week, Adam spoke on Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And Paul took us up. He changed our point of view and had us look from a heavenly standpoint. He reminded us that Christ, our Savior, is seated at the right hand of God. And the amazing news, that when Christ appears, we too will return in glory. The same glory that Christ has when he returns, we too will return in all glory. And then Paul comes crashing back down. He brings us up and he comes crashing back down to remind us of all of the earthly things that we might be struggling with in our daily lives. The things that get in the way of allowing us to put all of our attention on God and taking this heavenly perspective. (coughs) And so, I think something that is always very important whenever we're looking at scripture is to think about the context. The context of what Paul was talking about when he wrote the letter to the Colossians. And this group, the Colossians, you have to ask, is what Paul was telling them 2,000 years ago still important and is still affecting the way that we live in today's world? I think we can, does anyone think yes? Maybe yes? Okay, cool, thank you, yes, it 100% does. But you have to understand, this town was in Asia Minor. And does anyone know where Asia Minor is? It's Turkey, it's modern day Turkey. You might be... Yeah, Constantinople and the Byzantines and and all that area. But Asia Minor is modern-day Turkey, and you have to think about what Turkey looks like on the map. It is this crossroads for a bunch of different cultures and civilizations, civilizations in the area. It almost looks like a land bridge that's connecting these different places. And of course, during this time, they are under Roman control. So right here, you have their own culture that's already in place, You have the Roman and Greek cultures that are starting to make influences. And because of their location, you also have cultures and influences coming from Asia and the Middle East and even up from Egypt and Africa. And so this is just a crashing pot of ideas and philosophies and deities. There is something for everyone something to make your life easier and somewhere that you can turn to help you in your daily walk. Just to give you an idea, Greek gods. Who here knows Greek gods? I'm not going to lie. I I looked some of these up and it's amazing what kind of gods that they have for you. There's of course some of the usual ones like Apollo, the god of music, poetry, and art. Ares, the god of war. Of course, Eros, the god of love. One of my favorites that I found was Aristeus, the god of beekeeping. Yeah, if, if y'all wanted to start keeping bees, there you go, god Aristeus. Asclepius, the god of medicine and healing. Attis, the god of vegetation. And if you're a farmer and maybe you didn't have a good crop yield, instead of praying to Attis for vegetation growth, you can pray to Cronus, the god of agriculture. Then you have Cronos, the god of time. And then over in Fredericksburg, they'd be praying to Dionysus, the god of grape harvest and winemaking. Hephaestus, the god of fire, metalworking, woodworking, sculpting. Hermes, this is one of my favorite ones, Hermes, god of trade, thieves, travelers, athletes, and more. And when I was looking at this, it just, it feels like an infomercial, right? There is something for everyone, and you can look here, 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 but guess what? That's not it. There's more. Always more. But then you have your Roman comparisons. 
let's say today you're really, you're working on your, your metal working and you're praying to your Greek God, Hephaestus, but your knife or your axe doesn't come out as good. And so maybe the next day you can pray to the Roman God of Vulcan, who is the God of metal working. Or the generals, they can pray to Ares, the God of war one day, or the Roman God of Mars. And guess what? There is also a Roman equivalent for the God of wine. It was Dionysus for the Greek and Bacchus for the Romans. I can keep going on and on, but I didn't even get to the fact that you had all the Egyptian gods and gods from all over who had influences on the people of Colossae during this time. And Paul is trying to make it very clear. Paul is calling on the Colossians and us to make a decisive break from the sinful tendencies and vices that have carried with us from our old lives. The Colossians, they're new to Christianity. They, they, a lot of them might not have been Jewish also. And so this idea of a one single God is a new idea. And God is, I mean, Paul is saying that Christ changes everything. We are renewed. It is no longer about you. It is about God and what he can do for you. And that is completely change your life and renew you. So finally, therefore, we're back to the therefore. If we indeed have been renewed and raised with Christ, those who have accepted Christ as Lord of their lives have been saved and therefore should live a life worthy of salvation. Our lives should change. A hundred percent. And I love how Paul states it. He doesn't say, let's just take a break from these things. Let's just, let's just calm down. We can, we can look to God and maybe rethink the way we do things. Paul says we must put to death the ways of the world. This can't come back. This cannot come back. We must put to death the ways of the world. This isn't a find something for the Lenten season that you can take a break on, so maybe you can refocus on God a little bit. We must put to death the ways of the world. And he even lists it out for us. He lists it out for, her, for us. He starts poking at us and telling us to listen up, okay? Here it is. I got a list just for you to pay attention to. You need to put to death sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desire, covetousness, idolatry, anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk, and lastly, do not lie to one another. And get this, he says that it is these very things that will lead to the wrath of God. I don't know about you, but I want to do everything in my power to avoid the wrath of God. And lastly, if any of you do not struggle with something in that list, please stay after and talk to me so I can learn your ways. Because we are very much, Adam talked about living in this in-between. The kingdom of heaven is present and alive right now, but we are currently in this in-between to where we still have to struggle with these. We still have these in our life. And I just love how Paul takes these general broad categories and then he lays the hammer down and says, you need to stop lying to each other. That might be the hardest one to do sometimes, whether it's a little white lie or big lies that we carry with us, that loom over us, making us feel guilty and shameful. But the one way we get rid of that way of feeling is to stop lying to each other. And so why? Why is Paul telling us this? Why is Paul telling the Colossians this? My daughter, she is very much in the why phase right now. Who here parents feel like their, their kids have gone through the why phase? I'd be very surprised if there isn't a hand up. But it just gets to the point. 
Why, Dad? Why? 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 And finally, I'm out of answers. It's just because. There's no more answers, Lena. You've reached the end of the road. And so we have all these whys that we could ask in this passage. Why is our world still broken? Why are these things still out there for us to struggle with? And let me tell you, because we live in this in-between, free will is still out there. Free will will always be available. And so what does that mean, free will? You see, God 100% could make us love him. He, is, he has that power. If he wanted to, he could make us love him. But that takes away our choice. And God doesn't want to force us to love him. He wants us to choose to love him. That's what makes his love great, is he wants us to choose to be in a relationship with him. And because of that free will, it leads to sin. Humans are not as strong as God. We are weak. And that leads us to sin. And that sin leads to the very brokenness and mourning in our world. And so why does Paul give these specific examples? Well, it's something that we struggle with. And I like to think that the do not lie to one another is something that the Colossians specifically struggled with. There were probably groups of people that it got back to Paul saying that they're struggling with these things, and Paul addressed it directly. And why are we talking about circumcision? I'm going to let Adam talk about that one next week. <laughs> and lastly, why must we put these things to death? Because these vices, these struggles can and will intrude on your relationship with God. And it will take his place of your focus of devotion. These things intrude. They get in the way of our focus and our attention on God. And God wants our undivided attention. He wants our undivided devotion. Not because he's needy, not because... He's selfish, but because he knows that as soon as we give him our undivided attention and focus and devotion, our lives really will be changed. I can take heart in knowing that as soon as I can finally figure out how to love God with everything and love him before everything else in my life, I will then be able to love my wife and daughter better. Better. I know as soon as I am able to love God more than anything, I will be able to love and minister to the kids in our youth group better. Our relationship with God strengthens everything else in our life. That is why he wants our undivided attention. And here's where Christ really changes everything. You see, back then, like I said, this idea of one God ruling over everything in our lives was kind of a foreign concept to people outside of Judaism. But think about it. That was kind of the minority group, was Judaism. And then all of a sudden, where are we at today with Christ? Christ's name is known throughout the world. People know of him. And here at the very end of our scripture today, verses 10 and 11, let me read it for you again. Having put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. And so you see, division, prejudice, discrimination, these things that are so prevalent in cultures all over the world today can be abolished through Christ. There is no longer any distinction for Christians. It is Christ who is the thing that binds us all together. He is the person who is the glue for everyone in the church. 
for us here in Dripping Springs and those who are being baptized in Greece and the Middle East through Tommy's ministries. Every single one of us is bound together through Christ. And because of that, because he has changed everything, because he is all and in all, our lives must change. We must now live a life that shows we are worthy of salvation. It's a life-changing effort, but it is a more than worthy one. And so I challenge you that as you leave this place, what do you need to change in your life? There's probably something on that list that you struggle with personally. There's probably people in your neighborhood that struggle with those things. And there's some in this community that struggle with all those things because they do not know Christ. And as soon as they learn that Christ can be Lord over all, their lives too can change. And so I challenge us as a church to go forth from this place, to know that that missionaries don't have to just leave the country. You can be a missionary right where you are and be in ministry with God to show the love of God to those around us. Would you pray with me? Just before the service started, Pastor Adam shared with me through text, he's not hiding somewhere, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 15. And I want you to hear this as you leave this place. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. The field is ripe for harvest. We're told that the laborers are few, but I see a bunch of laborers in this room right here. We're told that God has supplied us with everything we need to then go out and share his generosity. And so I challenge you to leave this place, to know that God is with you, and we will be rewarded. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.